Hi everyone, so I'm going to be talking uh, in this video about a good real-world example for wage increases, macroeconomics, inflation, cost of living. So it's a versatile real-world example that you can apply in many of your essays in macroeconomics. So let's get started. So this is an article from the Sydney Morning Herald. That's from Australia, where I come from, even though I currently live in the United States. But anyway, um, long story short, Sydney Morning Herald <laughs> uh, <laughs> published on January 20th, 2022. So quite recently. And it says economists expect. Let me try a thicker. Yeah, economics. E economists expect wages to rise this year, but so will the cost of living. Uh, so before I continue, uh, this is an example of a perk that I have for my members, the members of my channel. Uh, you can click the link um, that appears in the video right now or the link below in the description if you'd like access to exclusive members-only content and perks like exam-style questions, more real-world examples, lots of things for members, and it's only four ninety nine a month. It's really the cost of a cup of coffee. Um, so I'm pretty sure you will get the value of uh, value for the value of your money back and more. All right, let's get back to the article uh, after this shameless marketing plug. All right, so economists expect wages to rise this year, but so will the cost of living. All right, economists expect wages to start rising at the fastest pace in years with tens of thousands of people getting back to work. So people are getting back to work, but they warn that it might take months for pay packets to start increasing and that it may not be enough to keep up with inflation. As you can see, I have a diagram here. I'm going to zoom in and talk about it. Don't worry. Worker shortages, okay, exacerbated by staff being forced to isolate due to the virus, continued international border restrictions and a tightening labor market could start putting pressure on wages this year. However, struggling prices could still leave wages sorry, surging prices could still leave wages struggling to keep up. So let's zoom in and have a look at the diagram. So you can see here, um, this is a labor market diagram. Okay, so I have wages on the y-axis. Oh, wow, that's a little bit too thick for my purposes. Let's um, make that thinner. So wages in Australian dollar on the y-axis, number of workers um, on the x-axis. Okay, and you can see that the original equilibrium is the intersection of um, supply of labor and demand for labor. It gives us um, what I've labeled here as QE and WE. And because a lot of workers are out of work um, and isolating, uh, there's a huge decrease in the supply of labor that's sort of um, creating a shortage, as you can see here, the shortage. And then over time, this shortage will actually put pressure. This doesn't happen immediately. Over time, the shortage will put pressure on wages and they will start to rise from WE to W1. And um, the equilibrium number of workers will fall from QE to Q1. So this is a diagram to kind of represent what we've read so far. Remember, this is a labor market diagram. It is just for the labor market. Okay. Okay, let's continue. You'll see in the next part, I have a macroeconomics diagram. So the Australian Bureau of Statistics is due to release labor force, um, expecting an improvement, uh, basically uh, jobs, number of jobs being created, of jobless uh, rate falling from 4.4%, etc., etc. et cetera. Okay, so this is the main part. So um, the CBA head of Australian economics forecasts that both wages and inflation to start increasing but with the cost of petrol, food, clothing, and recreation rising as well. So here is a macro economic. So this is, the first diagram was a labor market diagram. This is a macro economic ADAS diagram to kind of show what we're being told. Okay, so there's many curves and many shifts. It's a little bit tricky. Let me break it up for you. So Initially, the um, economy is at the intersection of AD and SRS, and there's an inflationary gap. We know this, we know this because the economy is, you know, sort of recovering, um, and there is an inflationary gap uh, because the recovery is sort of, and the stimulus by the Australian government has sort of created inflationary pressure. So the government's starting with an inflationary gap, okay? And there's rising demand 
for everything. So aggregate demand is increasing from AD to AD1, but at the same time, worker shortages and supply chain disruptions are also increasing the cost of production. So you have both an increase in aggregate demand and a decrease in short run aggregate supply due to increases when costs of production across the economy increase, short run aggregate supply decreases and shifts to the left. So what's happening is the economy is still stuck in an inflationary gap, YIG, but the average price level is rising from APL IG to APL one. So despite the fact that the worker shortages are putting pressure up on wages and causing them to rise, um, the real wages, the real value of people's wages, the purchasing power of people's wages um, isn't really increasing. Okay, so keep this in mind. Um, I analyzed, I interpreted the article as the economy beginning with an inflationary gap because it's quite common right now um, in uh, specifically first world economies right now are dealing with inflation, but they're also dealing because they're dealing with a recovery from the pandemic induced recession, but they're also dealing with worker shortages and supply chain disruptions. So there's both an increase in AD, which causes demand pull inflation and a decrease in SRS, which causes cost push inflation. There's both demand pull and cost push inflation. And that's threatening to basically erode any increases in wages because if your wages rise by 10%, but the average price level rises by 12%, your wages have the real value of your wages or hasn't really risen. The purchasing power has actually declined or deteriorated. Anyway, so I won't go through the rest of the article because it just kind of talks, um, gives data and so on. This is kind of enough. What I did is I talked about the Australian economy, but I also used two diagrams to um, analyze what's happening, a labor market diagram and a macroeconomics um, ADAS diagram. Please subscribe, like, share, get your friends to join and become members, and let's all just have an IB Econ party. It was great um, sharing this real-world example with you. Have a great week. Bye.